this is Radical Time Out, where we gather each week so that we can experience the love of Jesus, regardless of your color, your class, your culture, your crisis, your crime, or as we've added the last few weeks, your coronavirus status. So we've got another C there, but all are welcome and we trust that you are feeling the love of Christ and will be encouraged. We need encouragement, especially after this very difficult week that we have had. Uh, just a couple announcements as folks are joining us and we'll get started, uh, but I do wanna bring you up to date on a couple of things. For those of us joining us for the first time, um, Manny has a daily video blog called One Minute with Manny Mill. He reads some scripture and then prays that scripture. And so we welcome you to follow us along on that. Simply go to Facebook, Koinonia House National Ministries, or go to mannymill.com and click to follow that video blog there. We would love to have you join us for that. Um, also, if um, you have a testimony, we want to give you the opportunity to share it with the RTO family. If you have a praise report of something special that God our Father has done for you during this stay at home time, we just heard a little bit of a one from Elizabeth, maybe more in the weeks to come. For those of us that are joining without video, we're looking at a collage with pictures of Denise Bartek and Melissa George and Jim Quattrochi giving their testimonies at RTO over, over the last couple of years, bringing back good memories of when we were all together. But next week, Diana is going to be sharing with us and we're looking forward to that. Uh, but if you have a testimony and you would like to share it, please contact Heather Heather at khnm.net or give us give her a call at the office 630-221-9930 and she'll talk to you and we'd like to get you scheduled next week again Diana's going to be sharing with us now this is the first Thursday of the month and for those that are new to RTO it's our tradition to recognize those that have anniversaries and birthdays on the first Thursday of the month. So it's the first Thursday of the month and we celebrate. And you have heard me say this many times, RTO family, that we can, as believers, weep with those who weep. At the same time, we can rejoice with those who rejoice. We have this unique God-given ability to do both. So our hearts are aching over what's going on around us. But yet we also still want to take time to celebrate marriages that are going on, going strong, and birthdays for people that God has given to us. And so I want to begin with anniversaries tonight. So if you have a June anniversary, wedding anniversary, kind of give me a thumbs up, wave your hand. I'll see, try my best to catch you. Oh, I see Bruce Welker, Bruce Welker, Bruce and Beth have an anniversary. Anybody else have, some of you don't have your, Bob, um, Bob Barger, Bob, Bob from Barger. Florida. Okay, happy anniversary to the Bargers in Florida. Anybody else? Let's see. I'm trying to scroll through, keep my pictures going here. And Heather's doing that. So, okay, anybody else? So June, oh, the Mark Macy. Oh, Mark and Marsha Macy. Yeah. Jeff Griffin, Jeff and his bride. Oh, hey, wonderful. Man. One, and uh -huh. Jim and Mary Whitmer. Jim and Mary Whitmer. Oh, wonderful. Elizabeth too? Eliz no, okay. Uh -huh. I think I've got everybody. Well, that's wonderful. Now, we also have a number of June birth dates. There are at least 10 in our group that I'm aware of. I'll give you the rundown. On the second, we had Samantha Gasick. Today, this very day, we have Ben Evangelista and Karen Tom are celebrating their birthdays. On Saturday, we have Kathy Woods. On the 8th, Steve Chambers. On the 10th, our Vice Chairman of our board, Joe Agnello. On the 18th, David Rossum is. And on the 26th, we have Monica Lamberty and Brian Aldridge. Now, all of these birthdays are pretty special. And we are thanking God for each and every one of you that have happy birthdays this month, but especially on Saturday, the 6th, I'm going to highlight somebody here 
because we have a special, special birthday. I'm going to unmute Hal. Let's see, Hal, you might have to hit that red microphone. If you look on the bottom of your screen, there's a microphone there. Hey, there you go, Hal. You unmuted now? Our yeah. own Hal Schmidt will turn 93 on Woo! Saturday. Ooh, and Hal, I want to show you this. For those that know me, I love chocolate. And I keep this Hershey Kiss on my desk. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm sorry. I just realized you weren't able to see. There's Hal. There's Hal. I keep this Hershey Kiss on my desk because it was from Hal's 90th birthday three years ago. It was from his 90th birthday. And let's see, how can we hear you? Let's try your try your microphone there. How say something? What? Oh, there you go. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Another wonderful year with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. 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 So we're so delighted. We're thrilled. Um, for those of you that are joining us for the first time, back a uh, few years ago, when Hal was approaching his 90th birthday, he asked God, what was his 10-year plan for him? And God told him, you've done all kinds of ministry. Hal's been a school teacher. He's been a principal. He's been a pastor. He's Reverend Hal Schmidt but he had never been involved in prison ministry. So in his late 80s, he got involved in prison ministry and has been joining us by going into the prison. So I wanna sing, let's sing happy birthday to everybody and then we're gonna have Hal open us up in prayer. So let's begin. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Yes. Happy Heavenly Father, for your ministry, for RTO, and this radical time of prayer and praise to you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord, for not only being our Savior, but being our Commander-in-Chief. Some of us enlisted several decades ago. <laughs> But even those who have recently enlisted, Lord, you've made it so clear that we are to make disciples from every nation on earth. And we are to instruct every disciple and ourselves in obeying every command that you give us. We thank you for this time out tonight in this fellowship with you and the Holy Spirit. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you again for all of our praying partners everywhere, especially at this night, and for our pastor who's going to give us your words. We thank you, and all of your people say, so be it. <laughs> amen. You, we say amen. Thank you so much, Hal. So good to see you. So glad that you could join us via video. Hal's been on the phone each well, week time meeting at the Compass Church. And those of you that are joining us by audio only, we're looking at a picture of the church. Compass Church is located at 520 Roosevelt Road. Uh, it's on the south side of Roosevelt, just east of Naperville Road. And uh, the church has an interesting history. It originally began in 1952 as the Wheaton E. Free Church. Our own David Ross grew up in that church, and Denise Bartek, Chuck Lewis, and Heather King are regular members and attenders there. Uh, over the years, Wheaton E. Free gave birth, as we say in church lingo, to a daughter church, which in turn gave birth to a granddaughter church, and um, if you will. And then several years ago, all those churches unified and became one church now called Compass Church meeting in four different locations, and they have 11 different service times, and even one service in Spanish. Luya! There we go. <laughs> we'll have to check that one out. Yes. So, uh, even in Spanish. Um, so, that is where we will be meeting when we uh, are able 
to get back together in person. Now, I'm not sure when that will be. Uh, Heather met with Jenny this week from the church. They, we have nothing definitive to report. And obviously we need to can be continuing to pray for all of our pastors and our churches about how best to go about gathering again. So uh, we'll keep you posted as we know things. But months ago, we planned a special program to mark our first night in our new location. And so we're thankful that video, via Zoom and this technology, we can still move ahead with the most important elements of our evening, our singing together. Craig Fong's gonna lead us in just a moment, our prayer groups, and then especially hearing from God's word. So Heather, if you would please spotlight Craig Fong and I'll get the words to the music ready. Um, in thinking about what song to select that we can worship together with, um, I've just been uh, just really overwhelmed with the uh, just a lot of feelings and emotions this past week, as I know many of you have. Just, uh, just the mourning, the, the sadness over the, the the death of George Floyd and and the uh, injustices and and also all the the rioting and on top of the COVID nineteen virus that we're experiencing. So I just cried out to God, looking, asking, just for for you know just an answer and a lot of questions lord and 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 he encouraged me with this uh, verse from zephaniah 317 and which says the lord your god is with you he is mighty to save he will take great delight in you he will quiet you with his love he will rejoice over you with singing and boy those were just the words that that encouraged me and i i hope that it encourages you as we as we lift our voices together to worship our Lord. So join me in singing Mighty to Save. Everyone needs compassion love that's never failing let mercy fall on me everyone needs forgiveness the kindness of the savior the hope of nations savior he can move the mountain my God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. find me all my fears and failures fill my life again I give my life to follow everything I believe in now I surrender Lord I surrender oh Savior and move the mountains my god is mighty to save he is mighty to save forever author of salvation he rose and conquered the grave jesus conquered the grave shine your light and let the whole world see we're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior, he can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of 
of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave, Savior. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Thank you, Craig. We so appreciate it. And isn't that just marvelous news? Our God is mighty, mighty to save. Tonight, it's my pleasure to introduce to you uh, Jeff Griffin. He's the senior pastor of Compass Church. And as I do so, I'm going to ask Heather to spotlight him. He's a native of Chicagoland. He's a husband, father of three. He's a was a pre-med student. Did you know that pre-med at the time I, that you were at Wheaton I, College with him? Pre-med, but he sensed God calling him into uh, pastoral ministry. And since 2014, he has been the senior pastor of the Compass Church. And uh, Jeff, you might not know, but Kathy Rose and Dale may be joining us from Florida tonight. They remember you from your days up in Le Lake County, Florida. And so they wanted to be sure to say hi to you. Now, uh, the church's website, I, I loved this. It said that they have sought to remain flexible so we may be responsive to God's calling on his church. <laughs> and all the while, refusing to compromise about the truth found in the Bible. And we say amen to that. And you certainly have had to flex, I'm sure, in more ways than you could have imagined at the beginning of 2020. And so tonight he's graciously agreed to speak to us on the disaster specialist. So I've asked Manny though, Manny, if you would pray for yes. Pastor Jeff before he speaks. Amen. Thank you, Father, for allowing me the privilege tonight of in a seating for my friend Jeff, who we are classmates from Wheaton College over 30 years ago. And here we are together, Father. So grateful God that he and Pastor Rick have opened the doors of Compass Church for us as a family to meet there. And we thank you, God, for their compassion for the prisoner and their families. We thank you, God, that they are a church that proclaim the gospel and lives the gospel out. And they know, and they know, God, that the gospel is not just a message, it's a lifestyle. So I'm so grateful, God, for the integrity and the consistency of your servant, Pastor Jeff, to live the gospel out so he will be a walking gospel preacher and teacher, and he will model for us who Jesus is. And God, I know, uh, Father, that these are difficult times. We have seen, uh, we have seen sin at its worst the last few days. We have seen, Father God, what a human being is, is able to do apart from Jesus. We have seen brutality. We have seen George Floyd being killed. And Father, we, we have seen people loot stores not caring for our neighbors. So I ask for you tonight, God, that you may use Pastor Jeff to encourage us as he speaks from the book of Joshua, that we as a church will be able to be light in the midst of darkness, that we will be able to arise and go as Joshua did. And I ask God that you may use Pastor Jeff tonight to give us a hope, a hope that is not fake, but a hope that is mm -hmm. real, a hope that we can live tonight, leaping for joy, Father, because we have seen your glory. 
So, Father, will you anoint your servant, Pastor Jeff, tonight with a special anointing as he speaks to us tonight. Father, thank you that he could be with us tonight on this first Thursday in June. So we commit him to you. And we ask God that he'll speak with power, that he'll speak with the resurrecting power of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Father, I do commit him to you. And I'm so grateful for him. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Danny, thank you. That prayer was an incredible blessing. You pray with a passion, a knowledge of God, and an accent that is just a pure joy to my heart, and I know many feel that way. Hey, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity to be with Radical Time Out. Uh, this is a, a beautiful ministry that I have watched from afar and just celebrated the Lord's redemptive work in it. And so, so grateful for you all. Just wanted to express that I too uh, share the lament. This has been a hard couple weeks just watching our nation going through such angst. And I, you know, watching protests, I've, uh, here in Naperville, I actually saw some protests live as well as some on video. And the brokenness and the anguish and the pain of so many is so evident. And we celebrate that we know the solution to that anguish, that Jesus Christ came to fill broken, hurting hearts, just like the ones that have been on display on the news. And so I join you in celebrating that we live in a broken world, but not a broken world without hope. Christ has brought hope, and we are glad to be in that hope and to extend it to others. You know, uh, it, was, it was mentioned that Manny and I went to Wheaton College at the same time, and I just wanted to comment on that if I can. Uh, we were about as different as two men can be in some ways. I was this squeaky clean, goody two-shoes, never said a bad word kind of Wheaton College student. And then I got word that Wheaton had done the unprecedented and invited an ex-con, a guy right out of prison to become a student among us. And I'll have to confess to you that I was freaking out. I was sure that Manny was gonna kill me while I was sleeping in the dorm room. But thankfully that didn't happen. And the truth is, as I've gotten to know Manny, there are few people who inspire me as much as he. Uh, Manny, your, your zeal for Christ is contagious. And just got done reading your uh, biography, Manny, and was so blessed and amazed at the beauty of Christ displayed in your story. It was just awesome. If, if any of you have not read Manny's uh, biography, I strongly advise you to do so. It is just a beautiful, beautiful tale. And though not as dramatic, every one of us has a, a redemptive story. We are all broken. And if we have found wholeness, it is in Jesus Christ. And that is uh, what I'd like to celebrate with you in Scripture. Uh, one of my favorite stories of redemption is the story of Rahab from the book of Joshua. You know, I was looking at, uh, you know, there's quite a bit uh, of, of a text on Rahab in chapter 2 of Joshua and chapter 4 of Joshua. I've decided to only read a single verse out of Joshua 6, verse 25, and then uh, I'll just uh, paraphrase much of her story as found in those previous chapters. So let, let me read now, Joshua 6, verse 25. Joshua spared Rahab, the prostitute, with her family and all who belonged to her, because she hid the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho. And she lives among us to this very day. What a, what a, what a great verse, is it not? You know, it starts off talking about her past 
Rahab the prostitute. And it ends talking about her future. And she lives among the Israelites to this very day. And I am reminded of what a glorious story of redemption that Rahab brings and how much it matches uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ and the ministry of Koinonia House and Radical Time Out. You know, let's just do some reflection. If, if Rahab, she lived uh, in the town of Jericho, if she became a prostitute, what does that tell us of her story? That tells us that she had a story of immense pain, immense desperation. Nobody sets out to be a prostitute, do they? No, no, no one says, yeah, my, my career aspirations are to allow men to abuse my body for pay. That is never what one sets out for. This is a story of moral corruption due to desperation. And Rahab must have had a story of times getting bad and from bad to worse and from worse to horrendous to where she could find no credible honoring form of employment in an utter desperation and humiliation. She subjected herself to that unthinkable trade of saying, okay, you can do with my body as you wish, if you'll pay me. And as a result, uh, her soul must have been just agonized as she suffered abuse night after night after night. It was in the midst of this immense despair that some, some strangers showed up at her place of residence. Uh, they were spies, we know, from Israel. Israel had been freed dramatically by the Lord from their slavery in Egypt. They had wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, but they were ready now to cross the Jordan and enter into Canaan, the promised land. And Joshua wisely had sent spies to check out what they were uh, up uh, for. And as they went to Jericho, they stumbled upon, actually we know it was God's sovereign hand guiding them to Rahab. And they knocked on her door and they said, hey, we're looking for a place to stay. They probably discovered her profession and they explained as men of God, no, no, that's not what we're interested in. We're simply looking for a place to lay our head. And she said, well, I can give you that if that's what you want. And she opened her home to them. And while they were there, she figured out who they were. She discovered they were Israelites. And she had heard about the Israelites. She had heard stories of God's faithfulness. We, we know from a conversation that ensued earlier that, or later that she had heard of God's redemption, how the people of Israel had been enslaved in Egypt. They too had suffered abuse as she did. They too were imprisoned in a difficult, oppressive lifestyle as she was. And she had heard that their God came to the rescue and delivered her out of that desperate lot and had brought them to glorious freedom and newness of life. That story had mesmerized her. She had thought about it again and again. And as she was so grateful to actually meet some of these legendary God followers that she had heard about, wouldn't you know there was another knock at her door? This time it was officials of Jericho who had caught wind that spies were in town and particularly at her residence. And they say, are those spies, those Israelites, are they here? And uh, Rahab made a decision to commit treason against her own people to fight for the people of God. And she said, no, 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 go away. They're not here. You've come to the wrong place. They were here, but they're gone. 
and in doing so, she saved the lives of these men of the Lord. After uh, this, uh, she got rid of these soldiers. The Bible says that she went up onto her roof where she laid flax uh, up there to dry, and that's where she had hidden these spies. And she said to them, guys, can we talk? What a talk. Wouldn't you have loved to have been up on the roof with them on that night? And she said, I've heard about you people. I've heard of your God, your rescuing, delivering, restoring God. Is it true? Has he done what has been said? And they said, yeah, it's true. He has. And she made a bold announcement. She said, I believe your God, Yahweh is the one true God, the God of heaven and earth. And in this moment, these spies, uh, they could realize, wow, this Rahab has really caught a vision for the truth of God and for his mission of redeeming broken people. She cried out for mercy. She said, I believe God's going to give you this city, give you this land. When you come, would you spare me? And they said, yes, we will spare you. Actually, it was more than that. Do you remember what they said? They said, tell you what, um, it's going to be some days before we come. Some days you'll have a chance to think about it. And if when we come, you are still of this mind that you want to abandon your people and join the Israelites, the people who worship and follow God, we will spare your life if you put a scarlet ribbon in your window. I, I have a... This, this is a, well, it's a towel, actually, but it's scarlet nonetheless, and we can imagine this being uh, Rahab's scarlet ribbon. And when that night came, Rahab had her ribbon ready. Time did not change her mind. In fact, it only reinforced her decision. And she hung it, she hung it on her window. I'm going to put it up here. Can you see my scarlet ribbon there? Friends, uh, she, she hung that in her window, and it was a sign of faith. It was a sign of covenant. It was a sign that she had chosen to stake her life on the reality of Yahweh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to stake her life on the grace to be found with this God. And remember what they had said. It's not just about you, Rahab. This is important. I hope you all see this. It's not just about you, but it's about your family. If your family is in that house, they too will find this great salvation. And as we go back to our verse, verse 25, in fact, let me read it again, if you don't mind. Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute. This is after the, the walls of Jericho have fallen. The army of the Israelites has rushed in to uh, claim the city. But Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute, see the family, with her family, all who belonged to her. Because she had hid Joshua, uh, the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho. And she lives among the Israelites to this very day. You know, the salvation of her family is, is an important theme with Rahab. And it's an important theme in everybody's redemptive story, not only do we find salvation? But in our salvation, God's grace can flow to others. And in the case of uh, Rahab, there was great salvation. In fact, it's interesting. If you want to know about this family and the, the new lineage, and this is a beautiful story, you know, so often there is a lineage of dysfunction. Many, as you shared with your story. I saw a lineage of dysfunction. But the grace of Jesus Christ creates a new lineage, a lineage of faith. And in the case of Rahab, her story can be found in the Gospels, Matthew to be exact, Matthew chapter 1. She is listed there as the founder of a new lineage. There in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, we find Rahab listed as the mother of Boaz. Do you remember Boaz? Boaz was the hero of the book of Ruth, the one who saved Ruth and brought 
uh, glorious redemption to her life, really a type of Christ shining in her life. Boaz was one of those little kids in her family, the family of Rahab. And Boaz uh, married Ruth, and they had a child named Obed. Obed would be the grandson of Rahab. And Obed was the father of Jesse. Jesse would be the great grandson of Rahab. And Jesse had a son named David. David would be the great, great grandson of Rahab. Friends, isn't that amazing? Here a woman whose life and lineage is on a track of destruction and pain is redeemed by the grace of God and finds not only change for her, herself, but a, a new lineage to be extended for generations to come. 25 generations later, resulting in the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. What a glorious story God created in this broken and distressed woman. I offer that for your consideration, that not only does God bring about glorious restoration for the individual, but God is desirous to bring a new lineage of faith where there was a tra train track of tragedy before. That's the business our Savior is in. You know, can I share a story in closing? Um, I'm a, a big fan of D.L. Moody. Maybe some of you noticed uh, I, I, I have his bust with me here in my office. And I'm a fan of Moody because God used him to lead a million souls to the Lord. That's not bad. But I'm a fan of Moody because he started a church called Moody Church. Some of you know Moody in the city of Chicago. And it was at Moody Church, a church founded by this guy, that my grandfather found newness of life in Jesus Christ. My grandfather, uh, I should clarify, Moody was not alive then. It was 25 years after Moody's death that my grandfather found salvation in Moody's church. But the story goes like this. My grandfather was an immigrant from Norway, spoke little English, and he got involved with the wrong crowd. And he was living in Chicago, living a very sinful and destructive life. I wish I had more details, but he would never give me those details. He, he said, all you need to know is that I was deep in sin and on a destructive pathway that dishonored God and was destroying my life. And he said one day he was wandering the streets of Chicago, partially intoxicated, and he just happened by Moody Church. And wouldn't you know, the preacher, uh, that evening apparently it was very hot like tonight, and they had actually propped the doors open to try to create a little bit of draft coming through the church. And my grandfather heard the preaching and was interested, and so he sat down on the steps outside the church and was mesmerized by aspects of the gospel message that he heard. He was so intrigued that it drew him in to the building itself. He stood behind the last pew for a time, and then eventually sat down in the last pew of the church. But he was so blown away by this message of rescue and grace, forgiveness and newness of life, that when the service ended and a usher came and asked him if he wanted to pray, my grandfather said, yes, I do. And he gave, at age of 25, gave his life to Jesus Christ. And not only was his life radically transformed, but he began a, where there had been a lineage of destruction and pain, he began a lineage of faith. He decided to marry a Christian woman, which he did, and to raise three kids to know the Lord. He, he did raise three kids, my mother being the eldest. And all three of his children ended up living lives devoted to Jesus Christ. 
they all had kids. And now those kids have had kids. I think my grandfather must have more than 50 descendants at this point. And though not all are walking with Jesus, the vast majority are. Many of us in full-time ministry as a result. And we go back to that inebriated 25-year-old man staggering around the streets of Chicago. And one could assume this is a hopeless story, but it is not because where there is Jesus, there is hope. And where there is hope in Jesus, there is the chance for a new lineage and a new story of God doing a miraculous work in a life and in a family line for generations to come. You know, I'd like to pray both a prayer of thanks to God for who he is and what he does, but also that this would be true of our story in increased measure. Lord, we are so grateful for what you did with Rahab, that you took the worst of sinners and made her a matriarch in the family line of Jesus Christ. What a story. And God, not only do you do that for Rahab, we know you can do that for us. And so we pray. We pray for our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren. And we pray that faith would run not only in our lives, but in those we have impacted as well. God, would you make our small lives the start of a mighty river for your glory? that rushes through the decades to come. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Powerful. Powerful. Thank you, Pastor Jeff, for that great word. Love and that. Craig, what a wonderful message too and song that our God is mighty to save. And who knows what that pathway is. For some reason, he has. He allowed your grandfather to be 25 years as off the path, but then put him on it. And he put mm -hmm. Rahab on it in just his perfect timing. And that's that's the word that we need tonight, too. Uh, thank you. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. We're going to break now into our prayer groups. Before we go, though, into those, I do have a couple um, of prayer requests to share with you. I encourage you to stick around. Please don't leave. If you're not comfortable with praying out loud, that's okay. Folks will understand. We don't judge. You can just be silent, but pray along with them. Uh, if you are calling by to IDOC uh, folks, some good news here, though, really good news. This week, we just have the four prisons in Orange. That's down one. Last week, we were reporting five prisons that have uh, staff that have active cases. So that's down one. The person, the staff person at Dixon has recovered. So that's good. And still no inmates there. So we're praising God for his mercy there. And then in yellow, we're down one there as well, because the one inmate at Logan is now listed as recovered. And so we're thankful for that. We're also thankful that, i um, not sure exactly how this works out in the numbers, but the numbers at Stateville, you know, were really high. Uh, I want to share a, a fun slide, though, here with us. This week, uh, last Saturday, we went uh, to Plainfield area, and we said to pass, uh, to Warden Gomez, hey, we're in the area. Can we see you for a few minutes? And he said, I'm just finishing up grocery shopping. So we, we met with him and had prayer with him in the grocery store parking lot. Warden is warden for Stateville, and they've been hit the hardest. Uh, they have had new cases, but he said they're all asymptomatic. So it's just they're discovering them as they're testing. So although you'll see on the website that their numbers are increasing, the good news is that the folks aren't actually sick. So they're testing positive, but not really with serious symptoms. So that is a great praise. But continue to pray for Warden Gomez. They've got a lot of, um, and all the other wardens, a lot of things, our state is broke. Uh, <laughs> Isn't that a surprise to all of you? Um, and they're going to have to have more expenditures to implement things, especially to get family visiting back. And we know you loved ones are very anxious to get back to visiting your loved ones. So um, these things, let's be praying. I'm going to open the breakout rooms now and send you there and call you back in about 10 minutes.
Okay, are we back, folks? Welcome, you're coming in. You're coming back. Glad to see you. Glad that you could join us back again. We're so thankful for everyone that joined us tonight and grateful that you stayed for prayer. Trust your encourage. We would be just delighted to have you join us again next week. Be sure to come back because Diana's got a word of testimony for us too next week. Manny will be picking back up in First Peter. Don't forget, you can see the message that we, we got missed out on last week. Praise God, no technical troubles tonight with Pastor Jeff. Pastor Jeff, again, thank you for coming. Great, great message. Great Pastor word. Jeff. And for Craig, good music as well. I'm just going to open this up. It's kind of going to be a little free for all. Um, those of you that want to stick around, sorry, we can't offer the ice cream. Those that are new to RTO, that's usually our tradition is we end the evening socializing over ice cream. So um, go get some out of your freezer if you can. But things are starting to open back up again. Isn't they that are. wonderful? Somebody asked me if I lost weight today. And I said, yes, I lost a lot of pounds after 14 weeks of no haircuts. There we go. So, um, but it's so good to see you all. Yeah. And here we go. I'm going to unmute you all. You all. How come you have an aura? There you go. Aura. Great you. message tonight. Thank you, Jeff, for your message. Thank yes. You. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Good job. Great yeah. hope. And there was a bunch of pastors yeah. and Kaplan's on the line, Pastor Jeff. Yep. My friend, Pastor Dan, that, that you met, my friend, Pastor Mike Eward, Dr. Ken Chase. Elizabeth, hi. Captain Leon from Sheridan Prison, hallelujah. We have Chuck and Linnea Martin, hallelujah. Hi, Martins. Yeah, good to see the Martins. Get your, yes. ice, cream. You can get your ice cream at Culver's. Yeah, Culver's. get your ice cream at Culver's. <laughs> get your ice cream at Culver's, <laughs> yes. There, there's nine. one of nine locations near yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Sounds like a monopoly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good. There are nine Culver's <laughs> that we need to uh, promote for sure. Yep. Good to see you, Chuck Lewis. Amen. Yep. Jeff, I wanted to just say hi. Um, my name's Bruce Welker, and I go to the Orchard, and I've known your dad for over 30 years, and I'm looking forward to getting together with you guys. Amen. Amen. Is Kathy Rose still on the line? Kathy? Mm -hmm. There's Bye. Kathy. There's Kathy and Dale. Pastor Jeff, you might remember them. You might remember them. Yeah. You have to unmute yourself there. You, you oh. um, officiated our daughter's wedding 16 years ago mm. when you were at the chapel. Wow. That's good. That's wow. Cool. That's history right there, Pastor Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That is Jeff, you're muted. You're muted. Jeff. Yeah, you need to you need to you unmute need yourself. Hey, okay. Hey, hey I, was, I was saying great to see you again. Yes. yes. Memories. Yeah. Yes. That's been great. Yes. Well, they're in Florida now, so we've got them from all over. That's yeah, we have people from from all over the country. Calling in tonight. Good group tonight. And out of the country. We had Shabib from Pakistan. Yeah. Again, too. Donald and Annie, how was your store today? How was what? The store. How did the store go today, Donald and Annie? Absolutely Great. wonderful, Bruce. Thank you. Thank Great. You. That was wonderful. That's good news. Annie's resale shop for the world is, is open. open. That's wonderful. For those that don't know, Donald that's on the call with us, he and his wife have a resale shop ministry. They fund missions around the world. That's why it's called Annie's Resale for the World. Mm -hmm. um, so when you shop there up in, uh, what Palatine. would that be? Palatine, right? Palatine. Yeah. Uh, Rolling Meadows. Rolling Meadows is actually where the story is. You are supporting missions around the world. Yes. Uh, How you doing, Chaplain Leon? Yes. Chaplain yes, Leon I... is the chaplain, uh, Pastor Sheridan. Jeff, at Sheridan Prison. Oh. And so someday you're going to go with me there to preach. Excellent. And we have a church there oh, now. Right. We have a church there. What the church? I have a question about tonight. Kathy New. Huh? Kathy New oh, was interviewed uh, at High Point Church on Sunday and gave a testimony for Jesus. Oh, it was great. Oh, 
we need to play that. That's online, to, right? It's available yeah. online. We need to play that. Yeah, we need yeah. to play that. Post that, uh, Jim. So, so check out Kathy. Okay. Post it. Post it, please. Hi, Jim and Mary. Love you. Hi, Thank love you. you guys. Thank you. Welcome Good to back, see you, Elizabeth. Pastor Rick Pearson. <laughs> Hallelujah. Pastor Rick Pearson, who is the Amen. campus pastor for the Wheaton Compass Church is with us tonight. Yeah. And he gave an amazing message too. So you guys have hit two home runs with us. Yep. Both so Pastor Eddie, Rick and Pastor Eddie, we're Jack. going to uh, connect with you by Zoom next week and figure out when we uh, can get RTO back into our building. We, awesome. we, we, we can now wait. Oh, yeah, can I wait. can I just say, Rick, this is ridiculous. When are you going to open up church? Come on. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to Pastor Jeff Rick. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a stern rebuke right there. <laughs> oh, and the record button is still going, so I'm going to I'm going to shut that off now.